on the trail of amazing stories. This is The Find. Going up. Way up. From this thousand foot tower, University of Colorado meteorologist David Noon is perfectly perched. It's a cloudy day and he's hoping for rain. The measurements that we're making on the tower at many heights allow us to establish a profile of water vapor and the water vapor isotopic composition. We're up at the top of the Boulder Atmospheric Observatory. With support from the National Science Foundation, Noon and his team are working to understand how water moves around our planet. So there's definitely one aspect of understanding the water cycle that's associated with water resource management. Another side entirely is thinking about the implications of the water cycle on climate, both regional and global climate. Noon says water isotopes from different parts of the globe are kind of like fingerprints. Another analogy, different colors. For instance, if we were to have some water here in Colorado that was a combination of perhaps water from, say, the Gulf of Mexico and a little bit of water from the Pacific, we can see that our water is some combination of these two. This is a simulation with a climate model. What we're looking at is the total amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. Noon uses both computer models and field observations from around the globe to study the chemical composition of rain and snow. With water isotopes, you might say what goes around comes around. Uh, the ice in the Greenland ice sheet has information about past climate that's pertinent to the North Atlantic, including regions like North America and, and Europe. Understanding those records lets us understand how the climate system behaves uh, in this part of the world. Water and the snow in Greenland and Antarctica. Where does the water come from? These young scientists from local middle schools send noon a steady stream of rainwater samples. We are doing a detailed investigation of water cycle processes here in Colorado. Water is a big concern here. The students can help us collect the data that we need. If the precipitation patterns change, the amount of water we have available changes, and the choices we might make on how we distribute those resources would also change. Understanding how water cycles through the Earth atmosphere system can help us manage it more effectively. It can also help us prepare for climate change. Now that's a tall order. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.